subject for today. I think it is always fascinating to look this time of year at coaches on the hot seat, proverbial hot seat, right? and ask the question, will any SEC coaches be fired in 2022? We have seen, we've talked a lot of Brian Harson. We're going to talk Brian Harson in a minute here, trust me, yeah. because he is the odds on always. favorites. If there is a coach to be fired, just kind of pencil in the Auburn head coach in that spot, no matter what yeah. situation that they're in. But it's interesting because this is going to blow you away. If And I'm not saying you specifically, I'm saying people who don't necessarily know this. There are four coaches in the SEC, active head coaches, who coached in the 2010s with their respective teams. Think about that. Well, the 2010s. 2022. We're only in 2022. I, so what's weird about this for me is, is like, and I feel like one of our biggest kind of disagreements, like on the old pod, with like, like epiphanies, like coming together of like, like when you thought nobody was going to get fired during the pandemic, because yes. that's a logical and rational and like fiscally responsible, uh, like, you know, way to go about that. And then I was like, no, man, these people are crazy. These people are absolutely crazy. Like, I this is the first time in a very long time. I don't want to say ever, but maybe ever like that I can remember. I don't know if anyone is fired after this season. It happened after 2018, where nobody was fired in the SEC. And it was the first time there was no coaching turnover in the SEC. So that would include a resignation or someone leaving right. for another job. Um, one of these awkward push out the door. Did you really get fired? Did you leave? Art Riles? Yeah. Maybe a distraction, guys. Yikes. No shit, Art. Um, anyways. <laughs> Transitioning quickly off of that, yeah, right. Um, the SEC had no turnover 2018 going into 2019. Since the start of 2020, so I guess that goes 2019 wait, wait. into 2020. You said it was the first time since, or like in 2018, it was the first time. Was it like since? It, I think it was the first time. Either it might have been the first time since like 2004. Or something right. like that. It was the first time since before Saban came to the SEC. Okay, that makes sense. Which, kind of a crazy thing to think about. Yeah. And if you look at the other Power 5 conferences, which during the pandemic, they actually, did, there was not a ton of turnover, which is kind of right. a crazy thing. I think there was only three other Power 5 coaching changes during the pandemic, post-pandemic, post-2020, that were not SEC. That's just Power 5. Which makes sense, considering how, again, it just means more and how crazy these people are down here. Yes, 10 different SEC programs have made coaching changes in the last two years. That's crazy. So yeah. that would include, you know, the Lane, Drinkwitz, Leach, Pittman cycle. Right. So that's Incredible. kind of where this Incredible class. Yeah. 4 4 2 is what we've seen in these last, I guess, three off seasons with 2018 going into 2019 being a zero. And usually when that happens, history suggests it's the calm before the storm. Right. So now as we look at this situation, Kirby Smart is your third longest tenured coach in the SEC. All right. He's been around 2016. You know, this, this, this is going to be year seven. Mm -hmm. Jimbo Fisher is your fourth longest tenured coach in the SEC. What the hell? This is year five? This is, this is year five for Jimbo okay. at AM. And he is your fourth longest tenured head coach in the SEC. Wait, who's second? Hold on. Don't tell me. You know second. Oh, Stoops, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Stoops. Um, also crazy, if we want to talk basketball, uh, Tom Crean's about to be fired here very shortly. You would think, but... He's going to get fired. Um, new AD, Scott Brooks, he's getting fired. There's, come on, there's no way he's not getting fired. They had yeah. one win in the conference. Almost beat Tennessee, though. Good for them. Um, oh, Bama. <clears throat> Bama. People forget that. 2018 is the second longest tenured basketball-football coach combo in the SEC. What the hell are you talking about? Okay. So basketball there coach, be no math coach. today. There's no math. There's no math. Basketball coach and football coach locked in the same jobs at an SEC school. The mm -hmm. longest tenured one, Kentucky. Cal right, Stoops, 2013. The second longest is Georgia, 2018. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Two big yeah. revenue sports. There has been a ton of turnover in the SEC. Tons. And now, I wonder, going into this offseason, are we going to have a surprise firing? Because whenever I say there's not going to be one, right, it ends up happening, conventional wisdom would suggest that Auburn is the most likely place 
to see a replacement, despite what we have seen with Brian Harson going paintballing with the team and rallying the right. troops and all these things. Kind of going to be a little bit bigger than that, and things change if you go four and three. You know, one thing I've always learned about if you ever feel like somebody is creating a toxic culture, what you want to do immediately after finding that out is give them access to a gun of some sort and then have them go shoot their players with paintballs. Um, legally. Legally, yeah, of course. So, okay, does this include, is this only firings or is this like people that resign, maybe move on to the NFL, take another job? Yeah, this, so that, that includes anything, which by the way, no SEC head coach has left for another Power 5 job since James Franklin did that. That's a good step. That's a really That's, good step. Now, people say, well, what about Dan Mullen? Dan Mullen stayed in conference. Doesn't count. Right. James Franklin goes from Vandy to Penn State. Right. Before that, Lane Kiffin going from Tennessee to USC. That's the only time yeah. in the 2010s that we saw that. There were, I guess, post-Kiffin, there were 15 such moves. And you just don't poach coaches in the SEC. And like I was, I was well, saying, this this is the, there's not a setting zone. Like, this is the step up. Exactly. Exactly. So if you kind of know that, it's still amazing to think about the amount of coaching turnover that has taken place. That speaks more right. to the lunacy that is the SEC. And like, we could have had this past offseason a potential Shane Beamer going to Oklahoma, Mark Stoops going to mm -hmm. Oklahoma, or something like that. And then even then, they would have still just been back in the SEC in a really short matter of time. So we maybe would have forgotten it. But it's, it's wild to think about some of these stats. I mean, I, I'm still like, I'm old enough to remember Dennis Francione taking the job at Bama, being there for two years. His second year, they won 10 games that they were on probation, of course. Um, and then leaving for the A&M job when they were in the Big 12 and saying like that was his dream job. And I was like, man, Bama's become a stepping stone. That's kind of crazy. And I did think Mullen, if he was given the chance, was going to leave for the NFL because I think he's more cut out for that. Um, I, so I have a really, I don't think, I, I think it's a hot take. I think there's one coach, in my opinion, that is possibly done after this year. and. It's not that he's going to get fired. I don't think it's it's the most stable, stable like coach and, and job that we've seen in the last two decades. And and this is, in my opinion, I'm not saying this is I'm a homer. I'm, I'm, I know where you're going with this. you right now. Bright, Alabama has the best offensive player in the country and the best defensive player we've seen in maybe the last 25 years. Will Anderson is a freak. And the fact that he wasn't invited to New York Still blows my mind. I, Bama kind of sputtering to the end last year. That offensive line was trash the entire season. You're out five starters. Georgia fans just ear muff it because ACLs do matter, believe it or not. Um, you're out five starters by the national championship game. Now, if I had told you that Bama was going to lose two receivers to torn ACLs in a three-game playoff where they were playing the best defense in college football history in two of those three games, that would matter, right? Potato, tomato. Whatever. Um, but I think that they are returning so much talent. I saw a stat the other day about how they, they have a five-star at every single position group except for safety, like on, on the field, at least one five-star. They're returning so much talent. I think the offensive line gets better. You have both coordinators coming back, which is very rare in a Saban, uh, what do you call it, a Saban coach team. Last time they did it, obviously 2020 with Sark and, and, and uh, Pete Golding. I, that defense is going to be ridiculous. I think this is the revenge tour that I thought was going to happen in 2019. Where, Get to the point. I know where you're going. Yeah, I, I think that Bryce Young and, 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 and Will Anderson are going to be number one and two like, picks in the draft, most likely. As long as they stay healthy, I think I don't see how it gets better after this. You know, like I know that Saban says he still wants to coach. I know that he's like, you know, he's, he's killing it in the NIL era and all that kind of stuff. I think he, they go like, absolutely just run rough shot through the entire league. They go 15 and 0. I think it's, it's the revenge season revenge tour that we thought was going to happen a couple years ago. And saving is done after the season. Absolutely. Like just rides up in the sunset because I don't, I don't know how you're going to get a better opportunity moving forward with this, especially with what Kirby's building and especially with like his age starting to factor in. Eight year contract, $10.6 million. Contracts don't matter. I know they don't matter, but 30% chance. 30% chance. I'm telling chance. you, the, like the, one, I, I, the first time I thought about this, it had nothing to do with, with football. It's just that, like, genuinely, from, like, knowing, you know, his daughter and everything like that, 
the way he's changed since he's, he's become like a grandparent and now both of his kids have kids. And, and you, you heard last year too, him saying like, I was shocked that he even admitted this, but he's not able to like get up as early on Sunday to start watching tape for the next day, especially if they have like a late game the night before. And like, it just, I, there's, there's cracks in the armor. Okay. So if there is going to be, I guess the question would be, we have to separate the two of, is a head coach in the SEC going to be fired? Which I would say the over under on that is is pretty dead set at one, right? Like that. That's what that's what the odds would yeah. be, and it'd be like plus one twenty or something like that. And then if you were talking like the odds for um, that coach, they would be at, Harson would have to be at least minus three hundred, right? Like in terms of three hundred. If you if you were like listing all the SEC head coaches, who yeah. was most likely to be fired? Like one of oh, those, he's like plus three hundred. Oh yeah, yeah, plus three hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's where I got confused. My bad. I mean, he was I'm minus three hundred a couple weeks ago, but yeah, yeah. no, I, I think that's fair. I think that's definitely fair. Who who's who's second? That's what I wanted to ask because I think, and by the way, I think Harson needs a top fifteen season to save his job. I mean, I, I truly do. Really? I, I think at this point, yes, yes, I absolutely do. And I think that buyout, because that buyout will be 15 million bucks at the end of the season. I I truly think that in Auburn, if it's not in contention, like mid-November, we will hear all that buzz again. Yes. So absolutely. what do you think the tipping point is real quick? Because this is fascinating. And if you, like, remember I told you a couple weeks ago, I, I did a deep dive into like, the history of Auburn head coaches. I mean, that would have been the 10th head coach that was gone after year, like, year one. Yeah, that's like the 1800s when they didn't like. No, it's not. It, it, it's at, I mean it's it's more recent than you would have eh, time. It's like the early. Shut yeah, up. It was like eighteen nineties. But like we're talking. But they've had they've had eight of the eleven head coaches they've had since they joined the SEC have had a losing record in year one. And you look at like this is one of the reasons why they're so crazy. And you know there's probably a lot of reasons why. But like they've had not like terrible like luck in year one because you look at what Malzahn was able to do in, in his year one. Yeah. But there have been several instances like Pat Guy like Shug Jordan, um, not Terry Bowden. Uh, and then, you know, with Harson, and I think I'm missing one as well. Oh, Tommy Bowden, where they have a losing record in year one and they come back in year two and they either play for the division title or they win the division title at least, play for an SEC championship or win, or even like we've seen with Chiswick, get to or win the national championship. Every single one of the coaches in the last six uh, or five out of the last six head coaches at Auburn have either played for a national championship or an SEC championship by year three. Pat yeah. Dye was the, the slowest one in year three. Terry Bad was 11 0 year one. So yeah. I, the trend would say that he should turn it around and they'll, they'll calm the F down down there. But I don't know. Like, That's what is the tipping point? Them. That's, yeah, I think of the playoff era wherein these teams have, have advanced to a different level in terms of facilities, in terms of mm-hmm. the, the, the skewed, the, like the skewed spending on recruiting yeah. that has that, happened is a big part of that. And it's been in the playoff era. And that's why it's, in my opinion, it's not as easy. I don't, Auburn fans do not take this the wrong way. 2013 was an incredible year. And it was an unbelievable wrong way. We don't need to go down yeah, the road. God's not coming back for this season. The pre-playoff era, winning a national championship was different. The talent mm-hmm. level that it takes to win, to need to win 14 or 15 games is different now. When you have programs like Georgia that are spending over $3 million on recruiting, when you have programs like Alabama spending over $2 million on recruiting, mm-hmm. these teams are spending more than double than you are on recruiting. And so that I think is, is, is certainly part of this. Now, I think, I, I absolutely think that Harson will be in that spot where he needs to get a top 15 finish to save his job or else we're going to be asking, there are going to be people asking the same exact questions saying, oh, well, you know, he just didn't exactly figure it out. And I don't think that's a given, especially when you look at the quarterback situation. It's got TJ Fenrell, Zach Calzada, Robbie Ashford. None of that says top 15 to me at all. Well, so, and I, I honestly, when you said top 15, my first thought was top 15 in recruiting because I think that's going to matter more. And, and like one of the things that surprised me too is, yeah, for real. That, I think that's been the biggest disconnect with him is, is him being able to relate to people um, like in this region and stuff like that, especially – from different like socioeconomic like classes and things like that. I, they're getting all new facilities. If you've seen like the, yes. the designs, it's like they're building a effing spaceship down there. Um, but none of that's tied to Harson. Yeah. It's not like he was asking for demanding, like, you know, how Napier did with like the $3 million, you know, he wanted to match Georgia's recruiting budget. I, I, I mean, I just have a hard time. I, I think Harson's a good coach, man. I, I know what happened in November. 
you played Bama really close. I get it, man. I, I really do. But you beat Arkansas. Like, that's a big win. Like, who, they, didn't they beat A&M? They, 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 they beat Ole Miss. They beat Ole Miss. Was, that's who it was. As you know by your shirt that you're wearing. Um, big Ole Miss fan you are. Um, yeah, that was beating, beating LSU on the road was a huge deal, obviously, for them. Yeah. And beating Arkansas the way that they did. They beat Arkansas. It was 38-23, I believe, in that game where they really played well in the second half. And then, like, pretty, that was pretty much the last time they played well in the second half of the game all year. Um, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, like, I, I just, I think that'll be a conversation. So let's, let's move off Harson. Let's move mm-hmm. off, let's move off Saban. If there is another coach that I think, because it's going to have to be from that tent, right? Like, it's not going to be stupid. It's not going to be, like, Saban, we're just talking about getting fired here. It's not going to be Kirby. Those deals are coming. Jimbo Fisher is not getting fired with that contract, which, oh, by the way, is now at 10 years. All right? That's this new, the new way college yeah. football works. You have to look within that time frame of, well, then maybe it would be one of these guys, one of these other 10. Probably not, not going to be one of the first two guys. It's not going to be Brian Kelly. It's not going to be Billy Napier. So then you're looking at it, right? There are a couple guys there who could have, I don't want to, they're not going to be on the hot seat, they're not going to be on anybody's hot seat, but they could absolutely have the honeymoon is over. You need to figure oh, this out. Where are you going with this? Eli Drinkwitz. Oh, that's not where I thought you were going with it. Zoo fans were real frustrated mm-hmm. at the end of this past season. Frustrated with the offense. Hated the fact that there was so much dependence on Tyler Beatty, who was an absolute star for them this year. Real. I don't care what the advanced stats say. Anybody that's willing to take on a workload like that, tip of the cap to you. What are the advanced stats say? Well, the advanced stats aren't great. Okay. SEC stat cap, not a fan of Tyler Beatty. Um, Eli Drinkwitz could have one of those honeymoon is over type of seasons. And if they don't figure out the quarterback situation, which again, like with Auburn, I don't think you could be done. I think you still need to add somebody. Brady Cook, Tyler Macon, we'll see Sam Horn, the true freshman who's coming in, who's not even enrolling until the summer. They need to figure out that quarterback situation. They need to figure out that offense, which has been really dependent on two players his first two years there, Larry Brown, true Tyler Beatty. Mm-hmm. If they don't figure that out, by the end of this season, the honeymoon juice will have totally worn off, and there will yeah. be conversations at the end of the season going into the next one, especially in a division where it seems like everybody's improving. And Mizzou is maybe going to be six coming into the year with those preseason rankings, which take that for what they are. Mm -hmm. But he is somebody to keep an eye on. And then I had one other one, but I I, I want to see kind of what your reaction was to to hearing me just throw that into the the atmosphere. No, I I think all that makes sense. I I mean, the thing is, too, because like Mizzou is not a school that has traditionally spent a lot of money in the football. They're traditionally a basketball school and journalism school, right? They have they have finally ponied up the money and they have there was so much excitement in year one of Drinkwitz, right? Gets that great win against LSU right off the bat. They they build, they they upgrade all the facilities, which thank God, because that place is just it looks awful. Um, and then you they've sold out season tickets quicker than they ever had, like talking about like a really good recruiting class back to back. Um their biggest win last year, I think Florida. Like in Florida. And that's Florida. a terrible, terrible win, really, when you think about it. I, I think you brought the point about the, the quarterback situation being so important. And it's it's even more important at a place like Mizzou because as much as SEC fans don't ever want to give credit to Mizzou for being in the conference and they're, you know, they're so far away and all that kind of crap. Mizzou has had a consistently good quarterback. And usually when it's been there for three or four years in the program for like the last 20 years, like that has been a staple of that program. You talk about like, you know, uh, yeah. Gulak and then James Franklin and and all like that, they, that has Chase been Daniel. a staple that, yeah, Chase Daniel. And, and that's been a staple of that program for such a long time. I think bad quarterback play, especially with a guy like Drinkowitz, is not going to go to well with that fan base. And you're right; like if, if they if they go to if they finish sixth ahead of Andy, that's not good. I, that's not fin- where I would have gone with it. But if they finish sixth and miss out on a bowl berth, which look, mm-hmm. I'm not, I haven't done like the Crystal Ball series yet. That'll come out in August. You guys will do that on College Football Uncensored. We'll do that on Saturday, mm-hmm. Saturday on some podcast where we'll kind of go through and do like a, an overall team outlook, but. Because of that recruiting class, I think there's that sense of urgency too. And they're, they have potential for rough end of season vibes where I have the, the schedule right now. I'm, I'm going to keep bringing this point up. They need to figure out the quarterback situation with Luther Burden, the number one receiver in the country who went to Mizzou, who Eli Drinkowitz like 
big, big time get Huge. in a different era of college football. You'd say, yeah, you got him for at least three years, though. Like, you're, you're good. Don't worry about it. Undergrads can transfer. If you yeah. want to talk about a guy who can get tampered with in year one, if the vibes are not good and they still can't throw the ball downfield, they can't stretch the field. That was the biggest thing with Connor Basilek. That was a, a point of frustration. And they felt like they didn't maximize the ability of the offense, the ability of the receivers. If they can't do that, and it looks like Luther Burden's not getting targets. He's not getting love. Man, those DMs. Yeah, yeah, if he's, if he's sharing on top of that. If he's sharing a bunch of the uh, the targets with um, what's it, Mookie Cooper? Mookie Cooper, the Ohio State transfer. Yeah, I'm looking at the schedule right now too. By the way, and this is me that need to be like a full, like the sky is falling in Mizzou, but Latek and Kansas State, Abilene Christian to open up the the uh, the season. That's tougher than usual for them because usually the first three or four games are awful. Um, then they go at Auburn, Georgia, and then at Florida. Back to back to back. That is not good. And they close with at Carolina, Kentucky at home, at Tennessee, New Mexico State, and Arkansas. That is a minimum, in my opinion, three losses. The East can the last to get better. Mm -hmm. He needs to have one of these because, like, I, I always say with you, Ladrick Woods. And by the way, for, for what it's worth, like any Mizzou fans listening to this, I'm an Ladrick Woods believer. Like, I, I like the guy. I love the run game concepts. I think they work really, really well. And you can kind of go back to the, some of his NC State stuff. If you want to even go back to the, the Jay Ajay stuff at Boise State, guys had really good ground games. And it's been yeah. a staple of his. And he's done it with a variety of backs. But you still are only as good as your quarterback is. And if that they don't. Those. Uh, yeah. And by the way, Steve Wilkes, uh, you want to talk about failing up, man. Oh, my God. Going to the Panthers. Good for him. Good yeah, for him. I guess. I, I, well, that's a different kind of one and done, but um, yeah, I, I don't, I, if I, if I'm betting, I'm not saying Eli Drinkwitz is getting fired at the end of year three, but if there's a guy that I, I kind of would be like, Oh, Hey, who would be the, the surprise? Or maybe if, you know, you would put a little flyer on if they were odds mm -hmm. or something like that, cause you'd probably be like, I don't know, you'd be like plus 800 or something like that right. for him to get fired him. And then the Mike Leach conversation is always exactly. interesting because he's always a bad tweet away from. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I'm getting you saw the like, like he had, he won the egg bowl and then went like went off in the press conference where he was just defending his own job and being like, like basically set up like, no, like this is my job. I want to be here. Like, it, like a, like a prideful thing. Somehow that was taken the wrong way. Strictly. Cause he said, he said like Yankee ass or whatever. Like, drag my Yankee. You have to drag my Yankee ass out of here. It, like there was not a lot of moments. I feel like Joe Moore had really like appealed to me. That was definitely one of them. And then said, yeah, yeah, it was, that was your guy, not mine. <laughs> um, I mean, he's cool off like off the field, but just yeah. I didn't see much of improvement with like Fitzgerald. But anyway, it, like that moment seemed like he was like kind of like taking charge. It was like the Derek Derek Mason uh, moment, like after they beat Tennessee like a couple years ago for like the third straight time, and somehow it backfired on him. But Leach, I, he's some he's done a good job, I think, of blending in so far. Okay, state contracts in Mississippi. Remember, maximum of four years. I think they're still trying to figure out that extension. I would expect it to be coming. Yeah. But yeah. that's an easier thing to get out of than it is at, at certain places. He's making five million bucks a year. Uh, it's, probably, it's probably more than that. But I, 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 I could be wrong. I think they're still trying to figure out what that extension looks like. If they get into a situation where all of a sudden, like, Zach Arnett is courted and Zach Arnett gets a group of five head coaching position or something like mm -hmm. that, the up and coming defensive mind, I believe he's 35 years old. I think he'll be 36 by the time the season starts. That would be bad vibes. Oh crap. What's the future? If, 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 if Will Rogers regresses. Exactly. Last two games gets were injured. If he gets hurt, if all of a sudden it looks like, man, they just don't really have that guy. This offense is struggling year three because they took steps forward in year two and they had this roller coaster season. It was totally unpredictable, but that's, that would be my question for them is if, what if they have that bad season and yeah. all of a sudden leech kind of falls out of favor with them. I would have never in my right mind predicted that Joe Moore had going into year two would have been fired. Right. And we saw it happen. So those are, those are the two that kind of come to mind in terms of the surprise, maybe not a, not just Brian Harson. Um, yeah. In terms of the SEC coaches who can get fired. I would say that. And then I tell you what, one thing they're not going to have guaranteed down there is, is a top five pick at left tackle protecting Will Rogers for sure. Um, I think Ross, that yeah. the Will Rogers thing will probably, 
I think it'll help him more than than hurt him. Is like the only way it could backfire is if he, like you said, gets injured or somehow regresses. I don't expect that to happen at all. He's been it, like I want to say still underrated and and undervalued, but he's been like you saw in the Auburn game, man, just just incredible. Um, but yeah, like you know, if, if something happens with him, he also is going to stay for another year too because he's only a junior. Yeah, so, so he he technically um, the crazy thing about Will Rogers oh, uh, going into this year. <laughs> Yeah, so let's play this game. This is a fun game. I actually love doing this post-2020, wherein we get to be reminded that that year didn't count as a year of eligibility against yeah. anyone. Going into this year, Will Rogers still has three years of eligibility left. He's like every Duke point guard, that, but like actually likable, like in my entire <laughs> lifetime. I, I tell you what, His man, numbers are going to be crazy. Yeah, without a doubt. But the one that I would say, and, and this is this is only if like, the sky is falling. The absolute worst case scenario happens. But I said going into last year that if Josh Heupel was smart, mm. he would just do everything he could to not like set expectations at an unreasonable level in Tennessee. Like the, the win total was six. I was like, well, you better stand to that. Get, get to four. Just get to four. And what he did last year in Knoxville was incredible. It, it just incredible. We, like, they were so close, like in the pit game. There were a lot of games there, I feel like, where I didn't, nobody thought they would have been in, and they hadn't been in in like the last, not just a couple of years, but like decade. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, in year two, because I don't know if the Vols are back, but their expectations surely are. And we've seen how that goes for, for coaches in the past. If something happens where, you know, I don't know, the defense is getting torched and it's because of the same stuff we've seen over and over and over again with his Probably offense. Yeah. If, if, you know, it, if it's okay to lose to Georgia, it's okay to lose to Bama. Those streaks will end at some point. You're in a year where, where Florida has a, gotta a be Florida coach. This year. Gotta be Florida. You're expected to beat South Carolina. You're expected to beat Kentucky, even though you shouldn't be most likely. You know they, won, I mean? they won in licensing this past year. Yeah. But I mean, but like, the expectations in, in, in Tennessee are always, always higher. And yeah. I, I just feel like if somehow, like, I don't see them regressing. And Hinton Hooker is, is one of the best quarterbacks in the country. But the, only, like, strictly because of the fan base and what we've seen, like, in the last decade there, there's not a, there's not a, outside of Auburn, there's not a program in the SEC that is more likely to overreact and lash out irrationally than Tennessee. The only the only pushback I, I would give, and I sh we should never. That's all for today, guys. Uh, <laughs> we should we we can wrap up after this. Uh, the, the only pushback I would have, and uh, I should never discount the craziness of of Tennessee because nobody in their right mind would have predicted when Jeremy Pruitt signed that extension in September of 2020 that he would be out of a job at season's end and instead embroiled in a lawsuit. The only pushback I would have on that is you got to look at who who his boss is. Danny White. Yeah. Danny White who worked with Josh Heifel at UCF, hired him, brought him over. Danny White's trying to prove himself with the big boys, wants to make it work. I think it would, and again, like we can't predict off the field stuff and, you know, behavioral things that happen or that come up. Nobody can predict a Bobby Petrino scandal. Maybe we could have. I don't know. I don't think Heifel would be like that anyway. And honestly, right, right, right. exactly. The character stuff off the field within players has been better than it has been in years. Yeah, I, I just mean with everybody. And yes, see, I wasn't. I, I, I phrased that horribly. I didn't mean for that to be a hyper thing. But like, who's the Petrino of this like group? group? <laughs> who's the Bobby Petrino? For a minute, people were saying Brian Arson, but you know, it's it's the it internet. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that's a it's a fun conversation to continue to have, and not to throw anybody under the bus or say that this coach is going to be fired, that coach is going to be fired. It's something that has become uh, just a constant topic of conversation in the SEC. Yeah. Uh, last thing I'll say too is we everyone fully expects that Tennessee or Texas and Oklahoma are not going to be joining the conference in 2025. I think most people think that's still going to be after July 1st of like next year. Um, we'll see what happens, but if when they come into the conference, I, I can't even imagine what this like the arms race that we thought was happening like eight years ago with like facilities and 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 recruiting and stuff like that is obviously going to be heightened. But it, you know. You're adding you're adding just more bad shit crazy with Texas and, and their boosters and like firing people and all that kind of stuff. So if there's not a lot of people fired this year, the first year after they're in the conference, it could be just a, a nightmare. So we're gonna have teams building rocket ships, I think, to just have 
just yeah. like it's toys. They're running out of stuff that has functional use, and they're just going to start building stuff that has. It, it, say what you want about the slide. All right. Yeah, that was so. That was such a better time. Five seconds of joy. Okay, that I'm getting from that slide. That rocket ship is just going to stand there. I'm going yeah. into space on that thing. I exactly. know. I know that they're just going to build that for me to look at and say, "Wow, that's a rocket ship." We're going to get to that point. It's coming. Just to be clear to our listeners, there's not a real rocket ship. Connor is <laughs> saying this like figuratively, but I will say this hot take. Um, speaking of rocket ship, I wouldn't put it past Auburn to like hire Putin at some point, just Whoa. in terms. Of, yeah, I just think about it. We'll close with that. <laughs> Slides and, and 